Hey everyone, Alex here at Equilibrium Tuning. Today I would like to present you with our installation video of our multi-port injection kit for the MQB platform. Today we have a GTI here in the shop with us, which we will be performing the installation on. However, this kit is compatible with all MQB vehicles and the installation should be very similar for all of them. But please refer to our website for any changes that may happen throughout the years. Before we begin the installation, we will want to look through our box and familiarize ourselves with all the components. So let's go ahead and open this one up. Now first we get our cool EQT stickers here. Here we have the wiring harness. We have our injectors, which with this kit we are using the 900cc injectors. They are port matched. We have our supplementary insulation parts that include the fuse, fittings for the hoses, bolts to mount the rail, as well as the clips for the injectors. We have our low pressure fuel sensor. And of course, we have the fuel rail itself. Here you can see our fuel rail does have a couple changes with the angle of the uh, low pressure fuel sensor port, which will now support the JDY manifold, as well as a slight angle here, which will help with installation of the fittings, making it easier when you're installing it. Now, depending on how you would like to go about this installation, you can either modify your existing stock manifold, which you will need to have a drill, as well as these brass fittings that will help for the fuel rail to mount. Now, if you do go this route, please, before ordering, measure your the bolt holes for the manifold, as some models do have different size holes. Particularly, we've noticed that the GLI models have different size holes. So please just take note of that and measure it so we can make sure we send you the correct brass fittings. Otherwise, what we will be doing today and what is our preferred and recommended method is to go with what is called the Euro manifold. It already has these fittings installed into it. It makes the installation much easier. And of course, you have the benefit that if you ever intend to go back to stock form, you can put back on your stock manifold with no problem. Here is the Euro manifold, and as you can tell, the fittings are already installed here, and they do already have the holes drilled for where the injectors will be placed, and you will not have to do any of that drilling, and your stock manifold will be ready to be reinstalled if the need ever arises. We will now begin the install of the MPI kit. First thing you want to do is disconnect the battery. Let's go ahead and do that. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the air intake. This is not a stock one, so refer to your manufacturer's recommendations. Next, we'll remove the engine cover and start to remove the intake manifold. Remove the connectors for any sensors that are gonna be in your way, like the mass airflow sensor, throttle body control and any hoses attached to the intake manifold as well. Also gonna be removing the bolts up here, that hold down the wire harness and coolant pipe. Move the zip tie off of this harness too. connector in the back. We'll loosen up your clamps for your boost hose to your throttle body. Just connect your fuel lines. Be careful because the system most likely will be pressurized. So have a shop towel ready to catch it and cover it as you disconnect it. There we go. Now with the Mark 7s and you and other platforms, you may have a bracket behind the alternator that attaches it to the block, but this model does not have that, so we're good there. And I can start to remove the bolts for the intake manifold. They should be a T30. Also need to remove the oil filter to help give you access. Should be a 32 mil. 
Just take it slow and let the oil drain out. I'm gonna get this connector here for the flap sensor. And make sure you remember to disconnect your CMP, or your camshaft sensor. Last connector. When all else fails, remove the bracket. Two T30s. One and two. There we go. Vacuum line, come on off. There's the Y. Do not forget about that. There we go. Cool. Push that off to the side. Push the connector down. And off we go. Okay, now that we got the old intake manifold off, we will start to transfer the components onto our new intake manifold. Start off with the big one first, the throttle body. All T30s. Transfer it onto the new one. Our indexing mark, so there's that. Come back and tighten those to spec later. And I'll do the bracket we had to remove earlier. Transfer that over. Now we got to remove the solenoid for the intake runners. It's gonna be two tabs that you just pry together and push it off. And there we go. Connect it here. Hopefully I'll make it a little easier to put on. There it is. It goes in there. Snap the vacuum lines in where they need to go. Now we're torqued down the throttle body, which is seven newton meters. Same with the bracket. I'll flip it over. Transfer over a map sensor. Yep, T20. Yeah, one thing to note and to remember is to transfer over your flat position sensor from the old manifold to the new manifold, as well as these mounting points for your engine cover. Sometimes they will go flying off. There we go. Hey, after we got our main surfaces cleaned, we're gonna install the intake manifold. Installation is the reverse of uh, removal. Make sure you put in this bottom bolt first. That's gonna fight you otherwise. Tightening down your intake bolts to the final torque, which will be nine newton meters, which we'll do in just a second. Plug in our camshaft sensor. Vacuum line. And the rest of your electrical sensors and actuators. Clamp for your throttle body. So now we will work on uh, the installation of the fuel rail. Get out your four injectors, your four clips, and your packet of grease, because we're gonna use that to grease up all the O-rings. All your clips. Now we're ready to install. We need to remove this engine hoist bracket.
And now we can install our fuel rail with injectors. Using the supplied bolts, we were fasten the fuel rail to the manifold. Now attach or connect our flap sensor connector on the MPI kit and into the chassis side. And then tuck that underneath there for clean look. And now install the brackets for our coolant pipes and for our electrical harness. Now we have to install our fuel line where you will have to cut, measure and cut the line in order to install it. Looks like it's gonna be right about there, the bend. Now we'll go ahead and tighten up our fittings, our bar barbed fittings on the rail. Now we install our fuel hose. There's a little grease on the end of the barb to help with installation. Hose clamp and then hose. Now we will install, reinstall our oil filter. Socket size is a 32. At this point in time, you're going to want to route your harness down and around everything and follow the main engine harness. That looks good. Secure it with a couple zip ties. Be easiest to install your ground wire now. So we're using the chassis ground right next to the transmission. Okay, we'll now install our low pressure fuel sensor. That's a one and one sixteenth wrench. I don't know what that is in metric at the moment though. I'm sure someone can tell me. There go. Connect to our sensor for the low pressure. Connect our intake manifold sensor. And then our throttle body. So, connect, connect. Okay, now we will disconnect this fuel line. Then pinch off our clamps. Next up, we will install our pins for the ECU. I'm gonna. Just connect the ECU here. There we go. Next, we gotta take off the cover here. Yep, there it is. Just gotta lift up on the tab right there. And we gotta cut the zip tie off here so we can get the cover off. We'll have to unwrap this a little bit so we can get access to the wires. Now we're gonna look for our connectors that we need to do. Start off with the ethanol sensor. It should be pin number 71. Here we go. Make sure you remove this lock connector first before you start pulling any pins out. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day. Push that through. And we're gonna look on the other side. Pull out the plug with a pair of small pliers, and then you're gonna install your gray wire. Pay close attention to when you pull this plug out, because it's gonna give you indication, tell you what orientation your connector needs to be, because they are directional. 
They do have a lock inside to them. And if you need to, you can put a light in the back side, which will then have the light shining through the hole you just made. Help you install a new one easier. You know what? I learned from the past that if you put just a little grease on this pin, it'll help it go in nice and easy. Doesn't need a lot, just a little. Again, you're gonna need the small pliers to gently, ever so gently, kind of push this wire in. Okay, next up is our blue pin, number 50 for the low pressure sensor. There we go. So we'll repeat the process for cylinders number one, two, three, and four. Pin number 25 is going to be your first injector. Pin number 24 is going to be your number three injector. Pin number 45 is going to be your number four injector. And pin number 46 will be your number two injector. You can always refer to our website for instructions and pins and colors. Okay, so now we need to install the power wires for our MPI kit. You got to locate your fuse box, take the lid off of it, and we're going to Start taking it apart slowly so we can sneak the wires in there. And once we got that fuse box panel lifted up enough for us to install our power wires into a switched power source. That way that's powered on when the key's on, but not when the car is off. There we go. Just click it all the way in there, and then reinstall your fuse box. Check the actual length of the wires in there. Install your fuse, and the cover. And after you're done with everything, you can wrap it up with some tape, make it look all nice and pretty, and that's it. All right, and there you have it. We're all done with our installation of the MPI kit on this GTI. Now be sure before you go off driving your car, start it up, listen for any odd noises, look for any fuel leaks, or also smell for any fuel leaks. If you see any of that, be sure you immediately shut down the car and inspect your installation. Now, before you as well go start driving off, make sure that you get your newest updated MPI tune from EQT so you get the optimal uh, tune for your car.